Is it just me, or does everywhere feel crowded these days? There's too many people everywhere, and some have found it so crowded, they've removed themselves from the hustle and bustle entirely. From building lonesome mansions, mountainside huts, or one-house islands, it's time to take a look at some of the most isolated homes in the world. Lonesome Lighthouse Imagine being stationed alone for weeks on end, hearing nothing but the waves crashing around you. That's the reality for a lot of lighthouse keepers. But if you thought living on a lighthouse out on the coast was isolating, you haven't seen anything yet. Take a look at this. This is Thradangaviti Lighthouse. This place isn't found on the coast. It's actually located on an isolated rock pillar nearly five miles off the coast of southern Iceland. Built back in 1938, workers had the unenviable job of scaling the slippery rocks through rainstorms and winds before reaching the pillar's pinnacle and laying out the groundwork by hand. Man, and I thought my job was tough. But if you thought building it was nightmare-inducing, imagine having to stay at this lighthouse. You're perched on a pillar 20 feet up above the crashing waves of the freezing Atlantic Ocean, and you can't exactly call for help. Firstly, because who's getting phone signal in the middle of the ocean? And secondly, it's going to take them a while to reach you. Thankfully, the lighthouse was automated shortly after its creation, meaning no keeper had the terrifying task of staying at this remote home. Nowadays, with the invention of helicopters, a helipad has been constructed on top of the pillar, giving easier access to the lighthouse. Even still, any house you've got to ride a helicopter to reach has to go down as pretty darn isolated. Island Inhabitants Apparently, Iceland has something of a thing for remote homes because just 10 miles east of the Thridangaviti lighthouse is another particularly private property. Elithale is a small remote island around 5 miles off the coast of southern Iceland. At 110 acres, this place is almost a tenth the size of Central Park. Yet despite the island's size and remoteness, there's somehow a house there. The question is, why? Rumors spread that the house was built by a billionaire in case of a zombie apocalypse. While this would be the best place for a zombie-proof abode, those whispers are wide of the mark. Instead, it's the work of the Elithe Hunting Association, who built the house here back in the 1950s as a place to sleep and eat while they hunt for puffins near the island. Elithe has no permanent population, so no one calls this lonely lodge their home. And it's no wonder, considering the lengths you've got to go to to get in the front door. Anyone wanting to visit has to take a 35-minute boat journey from the south coast of Iceland before climbing up some steep, slippery rocks to eventually reach the island's grassy slopes. Sounds like quite the tiring trek, right? But anyone brave enough to reach the lodge is at least greeted by a dining area, 10 cozy beds, a kitchen, bathroom, and even a workshop. Being so remote, there's no running water here. Fortunately, rainwater is stored and used for various domestic purposes. Doesn't sound too nightmarish so far. However, at night, things take a turn here, due to a thick fog that surrounds the island. If that wasn't ghoulish enough, anyone staying here alone will only hear the constant sound of waves crashing into the rocks. Yeah, that's enough to drive a person mad. Itsy Island Names tell us a lot about a place, perhaps none more so than Just Enough Room Island, one of the 1,800 islands dotting the St. Lawrence River off the coast of Alexandria Bay in New York. As the name aptly suggests, there really ain't a lot of space here. So just how small is it? Well, at just 3,300 square feet, it's only slightly larger than a tennis court. There's only enough space here to hold a tree, some shrubs, a small beach, and a house. Wait, what? While a tiny island doesn't sound like the most suitable home, it was purchased in the 1950s by the Sizeland family. Yep, yeah, I'm not joking. The idea was to use the plot of land to build their own secluded holiday home. Let's just hope one of them has a boat license. 
In fact, so precariously placed is the house on just enough room island that rising tides quickly cause it to flood. So, sandbags are virtually part of the furnishings here. While this section of the St. Lawrence River stretches to a width close to three miles, the inhabitants of Just Enough Room Island do surprisingly have neighbors. Well, sort of. One of the St. Lawrence's 1800 islands includes the nearby inhabited Imperial Isle, found 250 feet down the river. Still, if you've got a breaststroke your way to your neighbor's house, I'd argue that's some pretty remote living, wouldn't you? River Recluse Strange as it may sound, Just Enough Room Island isn't the only precariously placed property found on water. The Drina is a 215-mile-long river that runs through both Bosnia and Herzegovina and Serbia. Yet the most mind-blowing aspect of this waterway is what you'll find poking out of the water midway through its route. Take a look. This is the Drina River House. Though the town of Bajina Basta is less than a mile away, anyone that wants to pay this hut a visit has got the task of swimming through this terrifying 400-foot-wide section of river. Considering that's over double the length of an Olympic-sized swimming pool, let's just say anyone willing to check out this shack better be comfortable in the water. But despite the arduous adventure anyone's got to go through to reach this house's front door, it's worth the struggle. I mean, how cool would it be to wake up in the middle of a river? The question is, how did this hut get slap-bang in the middle of a 400-foot-wide river in the first place? Well, turns out the Drina River House was originally built in 1968 by a group of swimmers who discovered the rock while looking for a place to sunbathe. Following their find, they immediately decided the spot would be the ideal place for a shelter. They transported the building parts and supplies to the island by kayak, while larger components were simply tossed in the river upstream, allowing them to be caught as they floated past. Genius. Sadly, due to the house's remote river setting, it's said to have been destroyed by the river's flow no fewer than seven times. Yet despite the elements, the Drina River House is still standing, or floating, today. Just remember to pack your water wings if you're planning a visit. Desolation Station While swimming through rapid waters to reach the Drina House is no easy feat, it's more pleasant than what anyone visiting Desolation Peak has to endure. As the name suggests, this place is pretty isolated. In all, this hut is found at a head-spinning 6,100 feet above sea level. For context, that's over twice the height of the Burj Khalifa. Anyone wanting to reach this high hut is going to have to hike for a back-breaking four hours. On top of that, Desolation Peak is completely surrounded by natural landscape, meaning the nearest town is some 40 miles away. Man, they weren't lying with the desolation thing. Even the nearest road is around 15 miles away from this place. Considering how remote this place is, you'd probably want to stay for a night to soak up the views before heading back to civilization. However, that wasn't possible for anyone who called Desolation Peak home. You see, this hut, found in the North Cascade Mountains of Washington, was built in 1932 by the United States Forest Service as a fire lookout. Typically, a single man would head up to Desolation Peak in July and be stationed there until September. That's right, someone would be stationed here for months with nothing but their own voice to keep them company. I just hope anyone assigned the fire lookout post at Desolation Peak brings plenty of snacks with them, because taking a trip to the local shop ain't gonna be too pretty. Habel Hovel just off the coast of northwest Germany, in the North Sea, sits ten extremely low-lying islets, known as the Hallig Islands. These islands are so sunken that some of them flood up to 50 times a year. Yet despite the risk of being swept out to sea, many of the Hallig Islands are populated. Longaness, the largest of all of these, has a population around 100. While that may sound pretty measly, there exists a much more remote Halig Island. At just over 2,000 feet long and 300 feet wide, this island is certainly cozy. Yet despite Halig Habel's small size and the threat of flooding, there exists a curious lonesome lodge here. The house, located on an artificial mound to prevent it from flooding, is actually a bird observatory. 
During the summer months, one brave soul has the task of keeping an eye on all winged things on Halig Hable. And considering how isolated this place is, it doesn't sound like the greatest summer job. For starters, Halig Hable is some two miles from mainland Germany, meaning the only way off and on Halig is by boat. As for food and drink, well, that stuff has to be delivered by boat. Let's just hope those deliveries are prompt, otherwise anyone stationed here better become pretty handy with a fishing rod. Deserted Destination Okay, I think we've covered enough water-bound homes for the time being. How about we heat things up a bit? To the desert! It's here we find our next stranded pad. The aptly named Desert House is found in the unforgiving Gorafi Desert in northern Spain. Clearly, deserts with their hot, arid conditions don't tend to be the best places to build a house. And the Garafi Desert is no different. With deep, dropping gorges, sweltering 100-degree Fahrenheit heat, and of course a distinct lack of water, even Bear Grylls would find it a struggle living here. All that considered, the one-hour trek to the nearest town of Garafi makes this place feel pretty isolating. So. What's this house doing in such a remote spot? Well, the house was actually built and designed with isolation in mind. The ultra-eco-friendly pad is structured by glass walls, providing panoramic views of the desert, letting inhabitants know just how alone they are. With no built-in water system, rainwater is collected before being filtered to make it all good to drink. While that may sound all well and good, how much is it really gonna rain in the desert? Despite the probable lack of water, any adventure seekers out there eager to stay at the desert house will have to fork out up to 375 bucks to stay here per night. If you manage to save enough cash to pay this property a visit, I've got some advice. Bring some water and pray for the best. Holy Hermit Found in the Italian commune of Trambilino, you'd be forgiven for missing this next building completely. The place in question is the Hermitage of San Colombano. If you didn't know, a hermitage is a place where religious figures retreat to escape the busyness of everyday life, allowing them to focus more closely on their faith. And it's fair to say that the Hermitage of San Colombano is certainly a remote retreat, set at a dizzying 400 feet up a cliff face. Amazingly, this hovel reaches a similar elevated height to the Grand Pyramid of Giza. Despite the climb, it's believed a religious hermit lived in the cliff's caves in the 8th century, while construction of the church likely dates back to the 10th century. Though it's no longer an active hermitage, this holy house still has its church, as well as various fascinating frescoes on the wall. But if you want to take a look for yourself, you better be prepared for an arduous ascent. For starters, visitors have to scale a rocky path before ascending up a mammoth 102-step staircase carved into the rock. My thighs are burning just thinking about that journey. Man, reaching this holy house certainly sounds like a painful pilgrimage. High Up Hut Traveling through eight countries, stretching 750 miles long and reaching heights of over 15,000 feet above sea level, the Alps are one of the highest and most extensive mountain ranges in Europe. Anyone trekking across this massive mountain range can expect to see alpine lakes, deep dropping valleys, and wait, what's that? Though not the tallest peak in the Alps, the Foronan del Buines mountain ascends some 8,300 feet above sea level. Yet despite this heady height, you can find this property at its peak. Yep, found at an altitude around eight times the height of the Eiffel Tower is the Foronan del Buiz Mountain Hut. The hut was commissioned by the family of the late mountain climber Luca Vurunik, who tragically passed away in an avalanche nearby. So high is the hut that building materials had to be flown in via helicopter over no less than 18 trips. It features a sharp, sloping roof to prevent snow from caving the roof in. On the inside, there's not a whole lot other than nine beds and a small window. But the best part? This remote shack is completely free to stay in. All you've got to do is survive that 8,300-foot trek up the Foronan del Buiz's summit. Easy work, right? Still, that hike would be better than my current situation, hearing my neighbor's dog bark through the night. 
Cliffside Cavern. Oh, you thought we were done with the mountainside lodgings? Huh, no. Just over 60 miles west of the Furanan del Buin's mountain hut is another high home. The Bufa di Perero is found at a staggering 9,000 feet above sea level. Located on the Mount Cristallo of the Dolomite Mountains in Italy, this place is found at an elevation greater than the highest point on the rim of the Grand Canyon. Can't make it out? Well, that's because it's embedded into the vertical rock face. Take a look at this. Let's just hope anyone staying here isn't a sleepwalker, otherwise they could wake up to find themselves crashing down the mountainside. Now, you're probably wondering what this secluded shelter is doing here. Well, for years, people pondered on its purpose. Was it some secret hermit cave, maybe a clue to a lost civilization of mountainside dwellers? In reality, this bizarre building, known as the Bufa del Piero, is a remnant of the First World War. And while you might think of trenches and muddy battlefields at the thought of World War I, this conflict also involved fighting between Italian and Austro-Hungarian troops in the Dolomite Mountains. It's believed Italian soldiers somehow constructed this property as a means of shelter from the enemy and the conditions. Somehow, some way, Italian soldiers managed to climb the mountainside, all while carrying building materials to construct the Bufa del Perero. And that's not even mentioning the constant threat of the enemy shooting at them. Nowadays, the shack, containing nothing more than a few wooden chairs, is accessible by the Via Ferrata Ivano di Bona, a path kitted out with steel ladders, rungs, and cables to help any adrenaline junkies scale the mountain. Forget the Pantheon and the Colosseum. Bufa di Perero has to go down as Italy's most awe-inspiring piece of architecture. Rocky Room Surprisingly, Bufa de Perero isn't the only nature-hidden home. The Are Gorge, found in the middle of Switzerland, looks like the perfect place to unwind and be at one with nature. Clearly, someone out there wants to be at one with nature every single day, as tucked in the cliffs of this 650-foot-deep gorge is this mysterious entrance point. Incredibly, this is actually a door, revealing a hidden home inside the gorge. In fact, there are two entrances bored into the rock here. So who calls this home? Fred Flintstone? Maybe some Swiss gorge dwellers? In reality, these cut-off caverns are empty. Originally built in 1940, these caverns were designed to be barracks for 185 officers. While it's not clear which soldiers would be stationed here, chances are they belonged to the Swiss Army, who were part of the Swiss National Redoubt, who would defend the country in case of German invasion. Cramped as it may look from the outside, the caverns were said to contain sleeping quarters, offices, and dining rooms. Heck, there was even a railroad within the bunker to transport officers out of the gorge. Despite all those fab features, these curious caverns were never used. Still, that doesn't stop this from being a gorgeous, isolated abode. Solve Hut If any of you are starting to feel a little dizzy, you might want to sit down for this next rank because things are only scaling up. The Matterhorn is one of the Alps' largest and most daunting mountains. In all, this massive mountain, straddling between Italy and Switzerland, has a summit of over 14,500 feet above sea level. For reference, that's not far off the height of the Foronan del Buin's hut and the Bufa de Perero, stacked on top of each other. Anyone with a fear of heights will be glad to know there is no shack at the Matterhorn summit. There is, however, a hidden hut found near the mountain's peak. At a breathtaking elevation of over 13,000 feet, the Solvay hut is quite the mission to get to. If you're wondering how high 13,000 feet is, it'd take around 30 seconds for someone to fall from such a height to hit the ground. Ouch. Sounds like the perfect place to build a hut, doesn't it? Constructed in 1915, building materials were first carried up by donkeys to an elevation of around 10,000 feet. From there, a small cable car was used to transport the materials up to the 13,000-foot high building site. Incredibly, the building is still standing today, functioning as a welcome pit stop for hikers around three hours into their climb, with 10 beds as well as a radio telephone. Despite how much a quick nap may be needed, 
I can't imagine many hikers drifting off in the Solvay hut when they're that close to such a fearsome fall. Quick, let's move on to our next remote recluse before I get any more lightheaded. Marooned Mansion It's most people's dream in life to have their own grand mansion that they can call home. Presumably, that was also the case with George Moore. Moore was a wealthy man who made his fortune as a wine and brandy merchant during the 18th century. With his fortune, he thought it'd be a good idea to splash the cash on a mega house. So, in 1792, he had Moore Hall built in Mayo, Ireland. Long after George Moore passed, his descendants continued to live in the massive mansion. That was until 1923, when during the Irish Civil War, Moore Hall was burnt down by the Irish Republic Army due to the then-owner Maurice Moore's loyalty to Britain. The house was in ruins, and it's been that way ever since. Today, the desolate Moore Hall stands alone in the middle of some 80 acres of dense woodland. For context, that's about the size of 60 American football fields. Man, that's a whole lot of trees for neighbors. But to get a real sense of just how isolated this mansion is, take a look at this bird's eye view. Pretty chilling, right? Man, it's fair to say this mansion couldn't be much more secluded. Sailing Shack While anyone unlucky enough to stay at Moore House will be greeted by the sight of trees, trees, and more trees outside the window, anyone residing at the Lely House has a slightly different view. Yep, anyone looking out the window of this house will have a whole lot of water staring back at them. You might think the Lely House is found on some small island, but no. Instead, this is an off-grid dwelling that can float on water, meaning owners can have their house sailing along the seven seas. This is the work of Brazilian firm Sis House, who developed this 10-foot by 39-foot property that can be sailed on top of a floating catamaran, reaching speeds of up to 4 knots or just over 4.5 miles per hour. The house, fitted with a bedroom, bathroom, and dining area, is surrounded by ceiling-high sliding glass doors, allowing anyone on board to enjoy the wavy vista. When it comes to food, well, let's just hope anyone that owns a Lily house likes the taste of fresh fish. Cool an idea of a house floating along the water's surface may be, I'm not sure I'd be totally on board with it. I mean, sourcing your own meals is one thing, but can you imagine coming face to face with a great white while you're tucking into your breakfast? Yeah, no matter how much space I think I need, it's never that much space. Pillar Pad the landscape near the village of Katschke in Georgia is dominated by rolling hills and lush green trees. That is, until you come across this site. Alien as it looks, this is a natural limestone monolith that towers 130 feet above the surrounding landscapes. But even more jaw-dropping than the mega monolith is what you find on top of it. With the arrival of Christianity to the region around the 4th century, the towering rock became a place of seclusion for Stylites. Stylites were a group of early Christians who became obsessed with preaching, fasting, praying, and living on pillars. Yep, I've got no idea either. Between the 6th and 9th centuries, they miraculously managed to build two churches atop of the pillar. Sadly for them, by the 15th century, the Islamic Ottoman Empire's rule ended the puzzling practice leaving the pillar uninhabited for centuries. It wasn't until the 1990s when a local monk by the name of Father Maxim Kavtarazzi built a new monastery. Building a monastery after climbing a 130-foot-tall pillar? Yeah, sounds like only a feat Spider-Man's capable of. Turns out, Father Kavtarice ingeniously constructed a 130-foot-long iron ladder along the pillar, helping him scale the column. If having to climb a 130-foot ladder somehow wasn't isolated enough, monks are the only people allowed to the top of the Kachki pillar. So, chances are, Father Kavtarazzi comes across next to no visitors. Yep, this guy is essentially living on his lonesome on top of a rocky pillar that's close in height to the Arc de Triomphe. Man, and I used to think sleeping on top bunk was a bold move. 
Well, what do you reckon? Have you come across any remarkable remote houses in your time? Let me know in the comments below, and thanks for watching.